Hi, everyone. Hello, everybody. Um, we'll do one more minute for the latecomers. Yeah. Awesome. I usually start it one minute after whatever the start time is, because I figure if you're suddenly going, oh, no, it's noon or whatever time it is where you are, <laughs> noon here, where is it 10, 8 o'clock or 10 o'clock where you are? 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and also the loading of Zoom. We have to give that extra minute. <laughs> Hello to all the hand waving icons. <laughs> nice to see. All right. I think we're ready to start. All right. Okay, hi everyone. I'm Ariel from Photomine, um, from our offices in Israel. Um, thank you for coming. Um, this is Kathy in the other square. Um, <laughs> Kathy is the founder and CEO of the Photo Managers, um, and she's going to tell you all about that soon. Um, I wanted to really personally thank you, Kathy, um, for joining us. I'm really, really excited to offer new, um, fun, interesting content for our users. Um, and I, I could tell you guys I got a sneak peek and it's super interesting, super exciting, and it makes um, everything you're going to hear is going to make all of the things that you do much easier and simpler and um, more manageable. Uh, so thank you so much, Kathy. Um, and before we get started, I just have a few technical announcements. Uh, first of all, I see people already began, which is great. Um, there's a chat, a place to have a chat. Um, and you see the two goes to either to the panelists or to everyone. Um, so feel free to throw your questions as Kathy's teaching us. Um, at the end, we'll have a question and answer session um, where either Kathy or I will be happy to jump in and answer your questions. Um, I also wanted to let you guys know if at any point you're disconnected or anything like that, click on the link again, join us, we'll be here. Um, and finally, the webinar is being recorded and we throughout the session will um, promise a whole bunch of fun things. Uh, so all of that information will um, you'll get by tomorrow. Um, you'll have a link to the recording um, and a whole bunch of different fun things that will help you as you go through your photo organizing journey. Um, and with that, Kathy. Thanks, Ariel. Well, this is exciting. I've been really looking forward to this opportunity to speak to your audience. And I'm glad you said uh, photo organizing journey because it is indeed a journey. It's not a one, you know, one weekend uh, event usually in your life. And so uh, I'm really looking forward to this again, like Ariel said, at your questions, we'll answer them at the end. And so the title of this is Organize Your Printed Photos. I feel like that's really important. I've been actually doing this presentation quite frequently to a lot of different organizations. And of course, all the digital questions will come up, but that's like gonna be another presentation for another time. They're two very complex and different projects in some ways, the difference between organizing your uh, digital photos and organizing your printed photos. But for today, we're gonna focus mostly on printed. So as uh, Ariel, I'm, I'm gonna, un let's see, I think I'm gonna stop my video just so that, whoops. Yeah, so though, there we go. So you're looking at just my screen. Uh, so my name is Kathy Nelson. I'm the founder of uh, Photo Organ and the author of Photo Organizing Made Easy. I'm the founder and the CEO of the Photo Managers, which is a great organization you'll learn a little bit more about. And the title of today's presentation is Save the Memories, Not the Mess. So I wanna start with this great quote, but before we jump into that, I want you to just think for a minute why you joined this presentation. What is it about your photos that you care deeply about? And why is it that you want to do something meaningful with them? Such as either, you know, I always feel like organization is a means to an end. So what is it that you're hoping to learn? And while you're thinking about that and jotting some ideas down, why do you take photos? You know, think about why is it that you take photos and when is it that you grab your camera? What are the events that cause you to grab your camera? Now, unfortunately, because you could type them in the chat and we can see that later, other people could certainly experience your uh, telling us a little bit about why you take photos. Go ahead and put that in the chat. But I'm, I've been doing this a long time. And so I'm going to give you a few thoughts about, uh, you know, when you grab your camera, if there's a birthday, an anniversary, a beautiful sunset. Uh, lately, I've been joking snow in spring because we had snow in spring. So we took lots of photos of like my tulips covered in snow. Uh, all of these reasons, there's all these moments where we grab our camera. And this quote, I think really, and it's usually our phone today, right? It's not necessarily a camera as much anymore. There have been great societies that did not use the wheel, 
but there have been no societies that did not tell stories. And that's the fundamental key here, right? We take photos to tell stories of our lives. That's why this is so important. And what I'm gonna really narrow you in and focus on is the importance of the, these photos that you're going to be, that you're scanning, that you're adding to your photo collection, they tell stories of your lives, right? That's why this is so important. And it helps kind of connect you with the why you're gonna go through this process. So here's my story in photos. I mean, so if I asked you to share with me three photos that told a little slice of your life, I mean, it's always going to be just a slice of your life. I, I put this together as I was working on this presentation. Here is my husband and I looking like deer caught in the headlight uh, about uh, many years ago when we became adopted parents to my son, Joshua. He was born in a hospital in Texas and we met the birth mother briefly, but she left and went back to her home country. And over the years, Joshua grew up not really knowing anything about his genetic background. So when 23andMe, the DNA testing became available, we decided as a Christmas gift, I bought everybody a, uh, the DNA testing. And we were amazed when Joshua's test came back about how, I don't know how many of you listening to this have actually done this test, but they usually show you a map of the world. And my worldview, my husband's was very blue, which would be Northern European. Mine was a little mixed because I do have Southern European and Italian and a little bit in me, but Joshua's was like the cult, his just lit up from the world. But he didn't know anything about himself and or his background. And then all of a sudden, one day he got a message, uh, privately messaged through that through that program saying, how is this possible? This says that you are my, that you're my first cousin, which means that my uncle Raul and aunt Gabriella would be your parents. How could that possibly be possible? And so that opened up this amazing opportunity for Joshua to meet his cousin, Belinda, which you're seeing there on the right. This is the first time they ever laid eyes on each other. It's the first time he saw somebody that looked like him. This is a wonderful photograph. You can see the joy on their faces. Now, normally, though, if you looked at this photo in a collection without this little story I just told you, you might just think, oh, look, there's a young man with his girlfriend or his sister, or maybe she graduated from high school. We're actually at the airport. We had given her flowers when she arrived. That's why this is so important. Your photos tell stories and we need to share the stories with the photos. And, you know, I get chills looking at this. I, I know this is always uh, meaningful to a lot of people when they connect with these stories. So you, you all have stories like this, I know, in your photo collection and those stories need to be told. So here we go, your photos. What are they of? How many do you have? Where are they? And can you find a favorite? Could you find the photos like that to help tell part of the story? So first of all, so you know why you're overwhelmed and probably joined this webinar. This is an amazing number. There are 1.7 trillion paper photos in the world. I mean, like I just can't even fathom all those numbers. Never mind, like I mentioned, if we started talking about the number of digital photos that are being taken, that's like almost every year, uh, trillions of photos are being taken. So that brings us back again to this question of why, which I'm trying to connect you to this question throughout this process. I believe it's the best investment you'll ever make. I always say that whenever, as a professional photo manager who would uh, organize and manage people's photos collections for them, and now running an organization with, of hundreds of people who do this for a living, oftentimes we all share these stories about nobody ever is disappointed when they get their photo collection back in a meaningful way. It's the best investment you'll ever make whether you're doing it yourself or you're having somebody else do it for you, you will uh, feel a great sense of peace and satisfaction once you have access to your photos, like I said, so you could quickly find the photos that tell the stories that you care about. So how do you get started though, right? It's an over, it can be overwhelming. You have boxes of photos and you know, bins and all sorts of things. So we've broken it down. These are the five steps that the professionals, we do as professionals, and that can really help you in this process. You're gonna wanna set a goal, you're gonna do what we call collect, sort, save, and share. So I will walk you through each of these five steps now in the next uh, 15, 20 minutes or so, and leaving you plenty of time to ask me questions. So the first thing is you want to identify your goal. What is it, why is it that you're doing this? Is, it, um, is there a deadline? A lot of times that can be a motivating factor. Maybe you have a child, you know, somebody's getting married. There's a, your parents are having their 50th wedding anniversary. There's a new baby going to be born and you want to look at your own family, your own childhood photos, maybe so you can see, does the baby look, who does the baby look like? Uh, maybe there's a graduation, you know, somebody has just been diagnosed with Alzheimer's uh, maybe or cancer and you realize, wow, I need to capture these stories right now. This is really important. So that can be helpful to have a goal with a deadline because I like to tell everybody, this is like eating an elephant. 
one bite at a time. If you look again at this process and think you're going to do it in a weekend or just a few days, it's unlikely. You'll probably get frustrated and feel like you're not succeeding. And so if you have a goal, it's really helpful to kind of remind yourself of what that goal is. We also have a great online community called, if you search under the photo organizers, it's actually called uh, Advice from the Pros now, but you'll find it under the photo organizers, the a private group. We answer questions in there all the time. And so that's a great way also to uh, keep yourself on task. So step number two, you've kind of set that goal. You have an idea about why you're doing this. The next step is what we call the collect. This is a critically important process. You, we also call it the hunt and gather stage. This is the time when you really want to gather all that you have so that you get a good sense of what it is, the scope of this project, right? So you want to start looking for your photos and you're going to find photos in all sorts of places. You want to look for memorabilia, your digital devices, and your home movies, and you want to keep an inventory, and you want to group like with like. And this is really important. During this hunt and gather collect stage, resist the urge to reminisce. That's what usually stops us, right? You, you're gathering all these photos, and suddenly you open a box of photos you haven't seen in 30 years or 20 years or slides or whatever, and you, and you, you get caught lost in time. I, I do the same thing, right? If I open a box of my children's uh, childhood, I can't believe how cute they were, and I can go back in time really quickly, and it's amazing how a half an hour can go by and I didn't get anything done. So during this uh, hunt and gather stage, we want you to, uh, these are some ideas of where you can look for your photos your attic, closets, bedrooms, basement, drawers, tabletops, storage units, on your refrigerator, gather your external hard drives, smartphones, tablets, cameras, memory cards, right? Look for loose printed photos, photo albums, scrapbooks, yearbooks, artwork, report cards, all of the things that capture stories in the photos that you've gathered over the years, DVDs. And ideally, if you can set like a coffee table up or a table or a, you know kind of designate a corner in a room that that's where you start to put these you really want to gather all these things when we say uh, put like with like we mean put all the slides together in one location you know one pile kind of put all your uh, home movies your dvd you know maybe you have old vcr tapes little camcorder tapes put all those in one pile you know your uh, albums uh, all the photo albums that you may have the, pho the, the photos that are in frames and at that point, then you want to do what we call uh, take inventory of what it is that you have. So you, again, have an idea of the scope of this project. Do you have loose printed photos? You know, how many boxes of those do you have? How many printed photos do you have? Here's a great little tip. One inch is usually equal to 100 photos. Okay, so one inch of photos is about 100 photos, give or take. So that can be helpful. People tend to really underestimate the number of photos they actually have in their collection when they get started. Uh, again, photo albums. And so it's really helpful to say, you know, I have seven photo albums, three red, six green, magnetic. You know, use a, you know, you could just use a notepad. You can use an Excel spreadsheet. This is an example of a, you know, of a, of a form that we use. And so start keeping tally of that. How many slides do you have? How many carousels? How many negatives? Again, getting your arms around the scope of the project will really help because then you want to make what we call a phase plan. So, for example, maybe you just, you're, when we talked originally about what is the, is there a deadline? Maybe, again, I'll just use this example of it's a parent's 50th wedding anniversary. You know, so phase one would be I'm going to find all the photos of my parents uh, before they had a family, you know, maybe their early years. That's phase one. Phase two would be to then add to those, that photo collection all the photos of them when the children join the family and things like that. And maybe phase two would be uh, contemporary current day photos. That's just helping you break this down into more manageable chunks as you go through the process of deciding what, it's, what is it you're going to do. So again, if you write out a plan and you have a game plan, it's, this is going to be a lot easier process than it is, again, if you just like looked at that whole pile that I just suggested you put together and didn't, and didn't know, you didn't have a roadmap to get you forward. Okay, so step three. Now you want to start the sorting process. And we're going to talk in a second here, what are the supplies that you need, the advantages of creating a timeline, how you edit your photos, how do you start to... Uh, you know, put them in some kind of order. Are there any rules? 
And what do you do with all the memorabilia, right? Because if you're in this process and you looked at that list, you probably found maybe old family letters, children's artwork, um, you know, first, you know, baby shoes. There's so many things that we gather that aren't just about photos when we're talking about these memories of our lives. It's all sorts of pieces all come together usually when you start this process. So as you gather your supplies together, here's some tips of things that can make this a lot easier. If you have old magnetic photo albums where your photos have become adhered to the, to the, um, to the acid paper that's kind of deteriorating those photos, having dental floss or a spatula or a, uh, can really help you gently remove those photos from the album pages. Having your camera and a notebook can be really helpful as well. You can document the before and after photos especially if these photos that are in albums have some kind of uh, dates written next to them or on the back of them, you can you know, snap a quick photo of it or start maybe using index cards or a notebook where you, uh, say if you're taking them out an album, you can get an index card, you know, blue album uh, photos from 1975 to 1976 and write on the index card what, what that album contained and maybe name the album. And that is something that you wanna scan or take a, uh, as you know, grouping one of what the photos are that have come out of that album. You also ideally have uh, cotton or nitrate gloves so that you can, you have oils in your hands and you will, uh, you know, you can, your oils can uh, add to the photos and you don't really want that. It's better to use uh, gloves. And also lots of times people, when they start this process, if you're opening up old boxes of photos that have been in moldy places, a face mask, which today, if you're like most of us, you might have access to a face mask. I have a whole lot more face masks than I ever did before in this pandemic. Uh, wearing that face mask can be really helpful because there's dust and mold probably on those photos. And it can really, if you have allergies and things like that, it can really make your allergies uh, kick up. So wearing uh, that if you're going through really old photos. Also, you wanna make sure that you have some storage containers. Now, as you begin the sorting process, uh, they don't have to be of archival quality. We'll talk at the end about why the archival quality uh, boxes for the photos that you're keeping are so important. But these storage containers is again, you're gonna start a sorting process of like a must keep, a maybe and a discard pile. So this is where the garbage bags are gonna come in handy because you are gonna to wanna to get rid of photos. And I'll talk about that in just a minute. Now this can be really helpful is by creating a timeline as you go through this process, because it's really hard to remember uh, all the details. And as you start coming across photos, you're gonna probably wanna date them in some ways. I'm also gonna talk about the, the value of organizing thematically as opposed to chronologically, but we'll get to that in a minute. But make a list of your family members and what their birth dates were or key events or milestones that happened in different times so that you can quickly remember. You know, maybe you went on a, a vacation of a lifetime, you know, in, at a, in a certain year, or historically, uh, there was something historic that happened, and you maybe kept newspaper articles or things about that. Just, it's helpful to have this timeline available, so you can refer back to it as you're, so you don't get stuck in trying to remember, was Johnny, you know, five in this picture, or was he six in this photograph? I can't remember, but there's clues probably that will help you uh, figure out these dates, and having this timeline can really speed that process up for you. Now, I created the ABCs of photo organizing as a way to help myself visualize this project when I started working with clients, and also as a way for my clients and uh, people to really begin to get their arms around this. It's become very popular, it's uh, used quite a bit, and so I'm gonna take you through the ABCs of what I call the ABCs of photo organizing. So as you start to sort through those photos, you're gonna, and then I talked about having those bins, you're gonna wanna create one that's kind of the A bin. This is, these are your best photos in your collection. They're album worthy or they're, they are a priority to digitize sooner than later, right? So those are your A photos. Now it's often really difficult to decide, is this an A photo or a B photo? Because we tend to take photos in groupings, right? If it's a family, if it's a group of, uh, you know, a group of friends, you all went away on a great vacation together and it's the group, the, you know, the, the group shot that we all want. Even when you were using film, you probably took three or four because you wanted to make sure that there was one where everybody's eyes were open or everybody was smiling correctly. So that gets confusing, which of these are the best? Well, the thing is you don't have to just pick what you think is the best and the ones you can't decide, I call those the B photos. 
they support the A ones and they may or may not need to be digitized, but you can't bring yourself to do what I'm gonna talk about next, which is eliminate them. But you can sort them in an archival box towards, you know, so that you're not anxious about getting rid of those B photos. I tend to joke a lot of times about if you're uh, doing this with a lot of old photos, you can put a note on that archival box so that say somebody opens it in 20 years from now and you can say, I couldn't bring myself to throw these photos away, but you're welcome to. Because I'm sure, and you can maybe answer in the chat, how many of you have inherited boxes of photos of people that you don't know who they are? And it's just heartbreaking, right? And you can't really bring yourself to throw them away and you don't really know what to do with those. That just happened to me. Honestly, here's the shoemaker who has no shoes. My aunt uh, is, was 90 years old. She passed away very suddenly in January. And through the past, especially the past few years, i have been saying to her, Auntie Rose, do you promise there's no more photos in your collection that I need to see so that you can tell me, you know, because my, she's my, was my dad's sister. He had passed away. My grandparents, you know, she's the, she was the last keeper of those family memories. And she promised, oh no, Kathy, you have everything. I promise. Well, after she passed away and we got to go through the back part of her house, I have now inherited boxes of photos. That's heartbreaking. I don't know who the people are. They're wonderful old photos. She must have forgotten over time that she had those photos. So um, unfortunately, I haven't done it yet. So, but I know I'm going to be eliminating and, and doing the C that you can throw away photos. So the first thing you want to look at though when you're deciding what photos to throw away is get rid of all the blurry, the duplicates, and I suggest often landscapes and travel scenery photos. Unless these are important photos to you because of the artistic creative process of taking those photos, then this is you know up to you. But uh, we do know that we tend to keep all our blurry uh, duplicates. And the reason I'm saying that about landscape or vacation is for instance, the Grand Canyon, I'm using that as an example. The Grand Canyon hasn't changed much over the past 20, 30, 50, 100 years. So I don't need 20 or 30 photos of the Grand Canyon. Maybe I'm just gonna keep the one photo of the Grand Canyon to prove that we were there, but I don't need to keep all of those. The same thing with the Colosseum in Rome or you know, a lot of these, or sunsets. You know, The sunsets, ideally, you're a day after day and beautiful sunsets always occur. This is important even with your digital photos. Uh, if you're taking lots of photos, your flowers are coming up, enjoy that process. It's really a creative outlet, but at the same time, maybe a week from now, two weeks from now, make a habit of going through and deleting the photos that you, because again, they're just going to clog up your memory cards or your, um, your storage, and you don't really need all those photos. But the last point here is the S. Does it tell a story? Even if they aren't the best photos, keep the ones that tell the story you want to share. For instance, you may be looking at a photo of your father making a really funny face to with your son on his knee. And I might think that's not a worthy photo to keep because of the funny face, but you know that's the funny face that your father always made. So that becomes an S photo. So now I mentioned I was gonna talk about, are there rules? No, there are no rules. You can organize your photos in the way that you want to retrieve them. Decide, are you gonna search by people, events, by dates, right? So that's really important. The idea of, um, so I say we take photos chronologically, but we live thematically. So in other words, you don't have to organize your photos always in chronological year date order, especially if they're a mess. Organizing your photos by theme is much more interesting. If you're a family that love to travel, it's much more interesting to group your photos and we are a family that love to travel. And here are, our, it doesn't matter that you went on this trip in you know, 2007 and a different trip in 2013 or whatever. It's more interesting that why is it that you love to travel? What, did, what were the values of your family? We're a family that love to celebrate. It doesn't, you don't have to have every family holiday in chronological date order. It's fun again to see, this is, these, are, these are our family traditions. This is what we did around certain holidays. And so again, by freeing yourself up from this concept of organizing chronologically, but thinking thematically can really speed this process up for you and help you. And then when you add the metadata or tag them, you can easily find those photos and it'll bring much more joy to your life if you're able to find them based on themes and necessarily always just by date order. If you're dealing with uh, memorabilia, you can scan you know, kids' artwork, add those things. You can photograph 3D objects and you can um, store those separately, but you can also make notes so that you can cross-reference. Where are those photos? Uh, you can make a note, you know, if you're looking for 
you know, baby shoes, you know, where are they? And scan that photograph or that little index card so that people can know where to go find those uh, bigger items when they're going through your collection. So step four, this is the critical part. You're probably all here because you're already using uh, PhotoMind as uh, for helping you do this, is the scanning process. You know, you wanna, this is critically important. If this is the, you wanna be able to scan your photos, slides, negatives, because that way you're backing them up. You're able to share them with other people much more easier and you're able to do a whole lot more with those items. You do want to keep and safely store, I believe, the physical images that were the A pile. You do don't, it's not, I don't think you should be throwing away the A photos because you need uh, the, what we call the redundancy and backup. And, um, and so again, but the benefits of scanning is it's automatically creating a backup. You can then now enhance and restore those images and bring them to life in new ways that you weren't able to be able to enjoy them. You can, uh, it then increases your ability to share and enjoy. And here we talk about the idea that you can do it yourself or you can certainly outsource it to companies that uh, do these large scanning projects. But it's something you can easily do, especially with photos and albums and things by using uh, PhotoMind. And if you have specific questions about the app, I know Arielle will be here. She'll be answer your questions and uh, is a true expert on answering those. So the reason for that too is what we, we really believe in the three, two, one backup strategy. The idea that you should have three copies of your images on two types of storage media and one copy stored off site. So what we mean by that is you have a photograph that you've scanned, you know, so you have it um, at least online, backed up online in a cloud service, that you also have it on an external hard drive or a flash drive that you have in your possession. And then ideally one of those copies stored off site because today we know there's so many uh, hurricanes, fires, floods. There's just so many ways that media can get lost. And so this is just the backup strategy that assures that these, your precious uh, collection will be saved into the future. And then last of all, those originals I mentioned. The, again, you want to keep your originals that you care about that you want to keep into the future in archival binders or boxes so that they don't uh, deteriorate further. Ideally, you want to inventory and label those. Avoid basements and attics because photos like to live where you do. And this is where those index cards had come in handy again as well. When you're going through these photos, jot down some of those stories around those photos and you can add it into that collection. So if somebody opens up this box of photos someday, they're not gonna be uh, feeling like well, I feel with the boxes of photos that I just inherited with no stories, no, no information, nothing. Um, just how much easier would have been if she had taken the time to just give me some of the background of who are in these photos. Last of all, the best part, right? This is to me why uh, the means to an end. I always say organizing is just a means to an end. What we're doing this for is what we went back to that original concept of why do we take photos, right? What is it that it's to tell stories, it's to connect us. And so the sharing part is the best part of it, right? Now you get to celebrate your family legacy. You can use photo books, you can do video slideshows, online galleries, framing photos. The possibilities are endless of what you can do with your photos. So I love, personally, I think printed, uh, again, the idea of putting photos in a story format in a photo book is a great way to share photos. And so here are some examples of different types of photo books that you can make. And this goes to along with that idea of the themes. I made for my niece uh, her ABCs. She's two and a half and she's learning her ABCs. And so I gathered 26 photos. Uh, a is for Aunt Kathy, of course. I want her to know who I am. B is for bath time. C is for your cousins. And it's a quick little book she loves and she carries it around with her and it's a way to connect her with her family. Or 25 reasons I love you. Or 25 reasons we moved here. Or, you know, 25 reasons we love to travel. Favorite vacations. Family recipes. Uh, this is a great one to do is all the wonderful old family recipes that can be handed down. So there's so many different ideas of photo books that you can do for any occasion once you get your photos organized. And in fact, we have 12 photo album ideas that I actually worked really hard in the past few months to put this together. And so you can download this free guide by going to the photomanagers.com slash free dash album dash ideas. The good news is you'll get this in the email and maybe we can put this in the chat, but you'll also get this uh, link when the presentation comes. But where I just lay out 12 different fun ideas of what to do with these photos once you've taken the time to get them uh, scanned and into your life is turning them into some fun creative ideas. 
But again, I mentioned wall galleries. So walking into your home or apartment and having photos framed, you can, there's all sorts of fun pro products now that you can change photos out. You can, you know, they don't have to stay the same photos framed forever. Online photo galleries using all the different online um, programs, video slideshows, and you can put photos on everything today. You can put them on blankets. I love this idea. If maybe you have a grandchild or uh, a family member who's not feeling well, you can actually put photos on blankets and then maybe send them the blanket and say, this is you wrapped in, you know, wrapped in our arms. Right now in the separation time of the pandemic, especially where the elderly are not able to be with their family members, what a great gift maybe that you can surprise somebody and send them in the mail. And you can put photos on water bottles and Christmas ornaments. So the, again, the ideas are endless. It's once they've been scanned and digitized, you get this opportunity then to share them in really fun and new ways. So that's the end of this presentation. If you need more help, here's some ideas, some next steps. We, again, we have that Facebook group, Advice from the Photo Organizing Pros. My book, Photo Organizing Made Easy, is available on Amazon. It's $14.95. There's a Kindle version. Uh, has wonderful reviews, and we really, I go into a lot more depth about this. Uh, we also have the Photo Organizers Academy, which we, we do have online courses, and you, you're welcome to um, go there. And we have a coupon code, save 25, so you can save $25 on a course. You can always hire a pro at thephotomanagers.com, and you can email us at support at thephotomanagers.com if you have real specific questions we can't answer today. So Ariel, I hope I didn't go too fast. I didn't, uh, I tried to keep it to a half hour just because knowing people's attention span, but um, I think what it was do we great. Have? Excellent. <laughs> Thank you so much, Kathy. Super interesting. And also um, makes it um, the daunting task, not only organized and simple, but beautiful and over time and different things we can do. Um, so I really enjoyed it. And from the comments, I think our uh, users did too. Um, I gathered a couple of questions. There are some for me and some for you. Okay. Um, so let's see, and um, everyone can feel free to keep throwing questions um, in the chat and we'll get to them. Um, the first question was, um, which actually it was asked at the beginning and I think you answered it. So uh, maybe there's more to add, I'm not sure. Um, but the best naming convention uh, to organize the folders, um, if you wanna do it by year, events, people, anything like that. Yeah, oh, what's the best? The, main, the, num the best one is to pick a, a standard that you stick with, number one. That's like, be because what happens is a lot of times we tend to, we're not consistent, right? So that, you make a decision about what your consistent naming convention is gonna be, and then you stay with that. And also, it's really important that you document that so that you remember a created documentation. So we recommend, I do mine by year. I start a folder is you know 2020, and then in subfolders, January, February, March, uh, usually I do, you know, one underscore uh, 2020, two underscore 2020. And that way there you can search them quickly uh, in files like that. And when you're using numer numerical, your computer will quickly put them. But again, you don't have to just do it that way. You can, it's up to you based on how your mind works. So some people think uh, maybe about like birthdays or you're thinking uh, by seasons or different things like that, but be consistent. So hopefully that, because okay. otherwise it's really confusing. If you're, if you do Jack's second birthday or you do birthday, at all, you know, then it's harder to find it. So just find a consistent naming convention. Excellent. So the person who asked that question, if you have follow-ups, throw it in the chat. Um, let's see, I'm, I'm seeing some new questions. Um, can PhotoMind scan slides? Yes, um, as Kathy mentioned, we have um, now the option to do slides and negatives and photos. Um, in the email that we'll send tomorrow, you'll get all of the information on that. Um, and Kathy, this one's for you. Someone asked why save the photos after you've digitized them? <laughs> well, that's a good question. But just from best practices, the, a printed photo is still your best backup, right? It's the original document. It's, the, it's an original uh, source. So your, uh, you know, cloud storage can go away, your car drives can crash, all of those things. So I'm not suggesting, but I use an 80-20 rule. I think you should save 20% and eliminate 80%. But God forbid, you know, there's ever a, a crash or you're, you know, and you lose access to that, you might be really sorry. Um, it's optional, but those are the best, that's a recommendation that I, I recommend. It also relates to what you're mentioning about the Grand Canyon. How many photos can, you know, once you've digitized them, you want to keep one of those, but. Yeah, just one. Right, exactly. No, I'm not <laughs> suggesting. Yeah, that's the 80-20 rule. Just keep 20%. Uh, yeah. 
Excellent. Okay, good. Um, someone asked um, thoughts and recommendations about tagging digital photos. So I can add the photo mine side of it and then I'll give it to you, Kathy, if you have other suggestions. Um, this is for Bobby. Uh, we recently released a new version of photo mine that um, in the past we allowed you to um, add details by either album or by specific photo. And now you can pick a bunch of different photos and at one time add some sort of details. So you mentioned here that you're dealing with thousands of photos um, very easily, you know, if you have um, a, a bunch of photos of the same location or the same person or anything like that, um, you can select a bunch at a time and, and label them that way. Um, Kathy, do you have any other suggestions or, or uh, tips about that? Nope. You guys, that works. Uh, okay. Someone asked for tips on how to use PhotoMine. Again, that will be in the email that we get. Um, and we have a question here about uh, programs to enhance the photos, um, to get rid of mold spots and things like that. So with PhotoMine, we do have filters and colorization and things like that. Um, we were big on the notion of keeping the photo as it is. Um, so I wonder, Kathy, do you have any suggestions for um, I mean, yeah, fixing those things? Yeah, there's a lot of great programs out there, but I think, uh, you know, Photoshop, uh, you know, as your skill level increases, there's uh, certainly ways to do that. And, you know, sometimes professionals can really take a old cracked faded photo and re turn it into, you know, like the original photo. So uh, definitely maybe do some research. I don't have one specific one to recommend uh, off the top of my head, but there are, uh, but Photoshop is certainly, you know, the Adobe suite of products is the key uh, way to do that. And there's probably gonna be a little bit of a learning curve, but you can certainly learn how to do that and really change and, you know, really enhance your photos. Awesome. Here's another one um, about the photo boxes you mentioned. Um, someone's asking if they're available at Michael's or other craft stores. Um, you know, I tend to stay away. If, there's a great company that we recommend called Archival Methods, which they are a, they're out of Rochester and they, their products are reasonable cost and they are for sure archival quality. You'd have to look, make sure at Michael's that it says that they're archival. Um, you get what you pay for though. So with those cardboard uh, boxes that are really flimsy and kind of fall apart, I wouldn't recommend. Again, when you're talking about the archiving of the of those uh, the best photos, um, again, the box that you want to use for those B photos, then I think it doesn't really matter as much because those are kind of your secondary photos. Awesome. Um, okay, next question. Um, someone asked about PhotoMine. If there's no way to duplicate a photo, we don't have a way for that now, but we've heard that feedback recently um, and we're seeing what we want to do about that. Um, hopefully we'll have a solution for you guys with that soon. Um, and here, Kathy, this one's for you. What if I can't determine a date of my photo? That's okay. You, it doesn't have to have a date. You probably have an idea of a range of the time. There is, depending on how old the photo is, there's some great, uh, in my book, I talk about that. But if it's an old photo, like hairstyles, clothing styles, there are ways to kind of narrow down possible dates because of things like that. But if it's more recent, um, I think a best guess is fine. I mean, it's that part, the date doesn't really matter because when you're, again, when I talk about we live, we take photos chronologically in date order that we live, but we think again, the value of the photo is what does that photo represent to you? That's what you're wanting to capture more than it matters as much about the exact date the photo was taken. Awesome, another question for you and about your book um, is if you address metadata in the book. I do. I, I address meta bit. Yes. I have a whole chapter on that. Okay. Excellent. Um, mm -mm, okay. Uh, here we have two questions also related to photo mine. One is, do you need different apps for slides and films? Yes. The technology is different. So they're separate apps. Um, again, that information will be um, in the email that we send out. Um, and here a question about metadata and search. Um, so I wrote down this question because it was from earlier. Sorry about that. Um, how can you search by keywords? Um, are you, Henrik, I think you're referring to in PhotoMine. The answer is if you scroll down, there will be a search bar at the top. So if you've added details to the photos that you scanned, you can just search that way. If you meant something different, feel free to clarify and we'll get to that as well. Um, uh, um, Veronica is asking, Kathy, I'm not sure if this is for you or me, let's see. Um, the best place to bring all photos from various sources. The best place to bring. We recommend that you create on your 
on your computer, what we call your photo hub, your digital photo hub would be the ideal scenario where you uh, start with your main, you know, your main computer, name it my digital photo hub, and then create those, that folder structure. You can then import everything in there. And then from there, you can start making those decisions about where you're going to, you know, what kind of format you're going to, whether you're using Google Photos or Dropbox or whatever cloud storage, you know, process that you're using. But that would be my recommendation that you create one digital photo hub. That's one of the biggest issues that our members, when they get hired by somebody to manage their photo collection, especially we talk about digital, there's a whole hunt and gather stage of collecting digital photos, right? Where trying to help people remember where in the world, how many different places have you stored them? And then there is deduplication software. I don't know, photo money prices don't, but there is ways to run, um, there's software you can run through your digital photos that'll find all the duplicates. They won't delete them unless you tell it to, but to put in a folder on your, you know, say these are the duplicates. And that's, that's a great, that's an important step in the process because we all have lots of duplicates. Yes, and I'll also add to what Kathy said um, that uh, this was a premium users uh, webinar. So I assume that all of you that are asking these questions have a PhotoMind subscription, which means that um, as Kathy mentioned, the, the computer is the place to go and look at all the photos. Um, your subscriptions have um, an online access, so you can log into your account at photomind.com. And also in the same format that we were talking about with different albums and, and subcategories and things like that, um, you can also do that on your computer with PhotoMind. Um, let's see, I'm going to the next one here. Luann says that it's hard to think about tearing albums apart um, after you've spent time putting them together. How do you deal with that? Well, only the albums, I, don't, I only think the albums you should take apart are the ones that are deteriorating. Um, not if it's in good shape. I mean, I have a whole bookshelf of albums that I've never taken apart. What's fun about something like PhotoMind though, it's really fun to take, uh, to be able to quickly scan a photo you know, so that's a great way that I've been able to share, like, especially on social media, like my son's birthday, it takes me two seconds to go open up his old baby book and scan it and then share it, um, which is what I love to do. But so that would be, so I'm not sure if the question is, if they are old albums, they are deteriorating the actual photos themselves, right? So your photos, you notice how they get discolored. It's the, that's happening because of the photo album. And that's why you want to take the photo album, take those photos out of their albums. Also, it is interesting with, uh, if I was a scrapbooker, right? So I made scrapbook photo albums. I don't know how many people here did. And what, they're heavy though, and they're bulky. And so it's on my to-do list as well is to scan those full pages and turn those into digital photo books. Because the one full big page on an album can become one JPEG basically. And then I can turn those, so I'm, I will in time do that for my kids. And then they get to take their childhood photo collection instead of you know, leaving the house with three big bulky scrapbook albums, they're going to be able to leave with one small, thin digital photo album. Haven't done that yet, but that's a big, that's a process that I'm going to do when they get married, hopefully someday. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> okay, Cindy here asked, um, um, oh, to putting, uh, ordering things by date. Once you um, add dates to the photos, you can sort by date. Um, there are FAQs for that. I can answer more specifically. I don't need to bore everyone with those actions now. Um, and Kathy, another question I think for you, Kim is asking how important it is to preserve the data of the photo. The data, does she mean the metadata? I think so. Yes, I think so. That's, you know, metadata is just a simple, it's just another way of saying writing on the back of a photo. That's, people get so, metadata is such a big word, right? It doesn't, there, must, there should be a better word. I'm actually on a committee with Family Search where we're looking at standardizing metadata. They're looking at creating a, a metadata standard because there is all these different opinions out there. Uh, but that, the reason is so that you can search for the photos into the future. In time, you know, voice activated, you know, I'm going to be able to just, well, already with your phone, right? You can, I can type in cat or say, Siri, find all my cat photos. And it's amazing, right? They all just pop up. Uh, so that that metadata though is going to be important for these scan photos because they it tells stories that there may be a story behind the cat right like maybe it's your yes we know it's a cat but was that the cat that you found on the side of the road that you you know nurse back to health and those are the kind of important things that we mean when we say adding those stories and that and the tagging and the metadata awesome excellent answer i think we also got another question um asking about the 
the back of the photos, but I, I believe you just answered that. Um, and I believe we got to the bottom of our questions. Um, are there any other last questions? Um, oh, here, Louise is clarifying the question. It was about um, sorting photos within the albums. That's correct. We don't have an automatic way to sort the photos um, by date, um, but I, I see the feedback and we'll, we'll check what we can do about it for next time. Um, and that's it, I think here. Oh, one more question. Um, our negative, can you scan negatives from the 40s? Yes, you can. Um, that's our new app called Filmbox um, that you can scan negatives uh, with a backlight. It's a pretty cool app. You guys will see more information about that tomorrow as well. Um, okay, I think that's it. Kathy, do you have anything else to add? No, other than like I said at the beginning of this process, it's like eating an elephant one bite at a time and like Ariel saying, oh, we see your feedback. There is no, I wish there was like one simple solution, uh, but there really isn't. So I think what's great is, you know, companies like Photomine are going to continue to improve their product as, as technology keeps moving at a really fast pace and abilities to change all these things. Who would have dreamed we could have, you know, just said show cat in my phone and all the cat photos would have shown up, right? But um, so, but again, keep, I think my last words of wisdom are, you know, keep connected to the why. And um, that'll really help you, I think, as you go through this process. And we have lots of people here to support you along the way from the resources I said, and Photomind certainly has great resources. And I'm sure there's people here from all over the world. Photos matter to everybody, right? And they tell our stories. And history is happening today, right now, with the pandemic. One last thing, too, is I encourage, I just made my 89-year-old mother let me take a photo of her with a face mask on, even though she didn't want me to, because I'm like, this is history, what's happening right now. Uh, and we and you want to document it, you know, what your streets look like, maybe more empty or as people start to come back out and then all the other things that are happening. So that's it. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much, Kathy. So much okay. appreciated. I also see there's some people that their questions weren't answered. Send us an email. There were a bunch of questions that came in. We're happy to answer um, mm -hmm. afterwards as well. So don't worry, we're all available and happy to um, be with you guys throughout this journey. Um, so thank you again, Kathy. I really, really okay. appreciate it. And right. bye, everyone. Thanks so much bye for bye. joining. Thank you. Bye.